Oh. And that's why what you should do to be able to write and talk to us as well. Because if not, then why are we here? We want to see what you guys are writing there. Teacher has spoken. <laughs> and have you been? Make sure to be logged in on the YouTube and to be subscribed to the channel so you can write in the group chat. Yes. And uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're going to take a couple of minutes to wait for anybody to, to wake up, to wake up, and crawl in. Yes, yes. We, we always move these lives around because some people are like, I'm not done with work. Other people are like, I have to go to sleep. Um, and we actually we're going to do this an hour later. Let's just be realistic. We are very unorganized people. <laughs> We're very unorganized people, and it. It's, <laughs> you're getting. Figures. You're getting exactly what it is because yes. Yes, five minutes ago we were running down the dock trying to find the boat, and and get on here. Yes, I was finishing conch salad. I'm like, oh no, oh no, I have to. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, clearly, if you've been following the episodes, maybe uh, you're seeing that you know there's a ton of energy here. Um, I'm ha yeah, I'm just happy that I'm alive, you know. And we, we won't we won't go into that just yet. No, no, so, not yet. Um, but uh, we're, we're gonna Ziggy, hello, hello, popcorn ready. Yes. So uh, we're gonna wait a couple of minutes and then we're gonna like dive into this. Yes. And while we're waiting, thank you so much to our patrons. We got quite a bit in the last couple of videos guess why <laughs> yeah 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 thumbnail change uh, thumbnail change thank you guys so much who joined the patreon and to all of you users thank you guys so much we're going to do the live shout outs in the end of the video of yeah you know, my, my plan was that i was going to be the one with my open back but i don't have a tattoo yeah right so right, right, you know right. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Shade Hope, you guys look great. Where are you guys today? Tom is asking. Where ah, are you waiting? Okay. Where are we today? We are in the Bahamas. Um, and we have been um, investigating every part of the islands and the waterways and so forth. We had that small month delay because we're pretty much real time. Yes, we are not pretty much real time. We are real time. <laughs> and by the way, tomorrow we are recording the boat tour for you guys. Yes, yes. Something that you all been asking for so long. And you're going to see this as a disaster as it is. Well, yes. Because we're, we're not going to clean anything. We don't have time for that because otherwise we're not going to release it on Saturday. Oh, wait. Hi, guy. It's Terry and Sarah anchored right off your stern. Really? Oh, oh boy. My, that's William giving cards to everybody. And then we are like, <laughs> oh, <wait>. hi, guys. <laughs> You know, we we've had we've had several people come up to us, even though it was uh, we were across the New Atlantis, and we jumped out of the taxi, and one of the men that was organizing the taxis come running over, pointing and pointing, and he's like, "You," and we both are like, uh, "What?" He says, "I know you. I watch you." I, like, I thought he's joking. I thought he's gonna say like the joke that William looks like some actor or something. Like I. I um, yeah, that was so weird. Yeah, well, but yes. And then we had someone else also come up to us and say, I'm down here from snowy New York. Um, happy to have you guys and actually see you. We got you. You're a star. We know that. <laughs> you know, this whole live, I'm not going to remember. I'm not going to remind who got the 275,000 views. Oh, my God. Of our normal 6,000 views. Yeah, you guys can see how YouTube and what YouTube promotes, right? Yes. And, but you know what, what we decided is that if it gets people into this life and gets people into uh, understanding that there's more than just concrete out there. All right. So I guess a little imagination isn't bad. <laughs> little imagination. No, but for real, like, um, if this is happening, this is my opinion. If this is happening in real life and then why should I, um hide right and pretend that it's not happening on youtube well yes because we, we try we try to show it as it is obviously like we go to certain places because like oh shit like we we got to do the video and stuff but we but we still we always keep it as it is like true true and that's one thing is that we're going to continue on is that we don't make up uh, episodes we don't try to make well on this boat, we don't have to make a lot when we're in the refit because everything's freaking breaking every other day. Uh, that's for sure. 
But then when we're starting to travel, we're adventurous. We don't go to the typical uh, tourist locations. We try not to. We try to get deep down into the areas that most people would not go, uh, which later on in this uh, live, we're going to explain a couple nights ago, something happened to us that uh, we want to cover. But uh, reality is, is that this is our life. This is us off grid. Uh, a lot of people said, you're not off grid. You've got Starlink and you're providing videos. Well, <laughs> duh, we wouldn't be here if we didn't have a way to talk to you all and vice versa. Yeah, we got on those videos, as you would imagine, because they got so many views and so many different kind of people. We got a lot of different comments, which are kind of tells you also like the level of intellect of certain individuals. But what can you do? You know? Yeah, that's a so <laughs> subscriber is always welcomed, even if it's a subscriber with an opinion that is uh, opinionated. So, right, right. <laughs> um, so Craig is saying, I hope all that are watching will smash that like button. I hope so too. If you're logged in, put a like on that. Helps the channel. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, Brian from Pennsylvania. Hello, Daryl. Great couple of watching your channel. Thank you, Daryl. SV Persephone. Hi, guys. Oh, I already read that. Brian, nice to meet you guys. They're always so energetic with smiles. We try our best. <laughs> Tom, just be yourselves. Mike, morning. It's 11, 11 a.m. Friday in New Zealand. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Well, we hit somebody wake up call. Yeah, we hope you're not going to miss your job, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of Friday, but it's holiday maybe. So should we? shall we start? It's 53 people watching. Yeah, well, I, there's one question we may as well jump into. All right, let's okay start with, with this one. It's okay with me. Craig is asking, how did you two meet? Did Yana know that William had a boat when she first met him? Uh, oh, my. Of course she did. And that's why. That's why she approached him. Because he had a boat and so much money. Come on, people. Yes, that is our, our, common, yeah. our yeah. common denominator. Oh, um, money or boat? Money or boat. Um, and... <laughs> or a big wood like somebody hey. <laughs> somebody wrote on the last comment oh i'm just joking so how about you i told you you've got well, someone just ate conch salad and she's wound up like a like a like a top they they say conch salad is like no it, it, aphrodisiac you know? the the reality is is that we've had a, quite a few lives and we've answered a lot of these questions but for everyone that's new here because we have a lot of new people um no, actually, uh, Yana was in a restaurant, uh, a little French restaurant, and uh, I was there with my daughter at the time, and she came up to the table and asked if anyone was representing my daughter because Yana was doing scouting for modeling and as a photographer. Uh, so, yes, we met actually over her asking a question, which she never does. She left a business card and she immediately ran away. Yes, and I would I would like to add that I'm the person who never approaches strangers in my, in my life, and I was walking there one day prior, and that tells you just how life is strange. And I saw two guys, and I was doing fashion photography at that time, and I'm like, wow, I really want to photograph those guys because they have really good looks to them. And I'm like, but I'm so shy, I can't go to them and talk to them. And I'm like, wow, Yana, you shouldn't be so shy if you're a photographer. Like, you got to approach people. And I made myself a promise. The next time I see, I will see somebody worthy of my desire to photograph them. I'm going to go to them and talk to them. And that was William's daughter <laughs> next day. <laughs> so, that was pretty crazy. Yeah. So, no, I did not steal my daughter's agent or photographer away <laughs> <laughs> i did photograph angelina yeah yeah she did photograph and um i had i had said that i'm going up to bring the boat the trawler down from new york yeah, to, that was, to that florida was, that was a little later yeah and uh yana said well you know i'd love to go along and i'm like well have you done this before and she's like no but this is what i want to do <laughs> and so we bounced around we hit an island and grounded the boat on the way out it was pretty adventurous we stayed out for out for quite a long time in the ocean so when I ditched the boat, came back to Miami to work for a little while, and I told her that I was going back up to move it again, and she said, uh, not without me. And uh, from that time forth, uh, only until this last uh, pig episode, we have not been separated. So boat life, work life, travel life, everything has been uh, a, a thousand percent team. And so team that's work. that's the, how we met. We met because... This beautiful lady walked up to the table. I did. <laughs> and and he texted me and he's like, 
want to go have a glass of wine? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I guess. And she was like, do you have a boat? <laughs> <laughs> and money? <laughs> and a big trunk of wood. <laughs> Somebody says, by the way, that we forgot to say that you are one hell of a good-looking guy or something like that. Oh, yes. I read that, but, you know, I was going to let you read that. <laughs> okay. Th thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you read it. You read it. Yes. Oh, yes. my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Craig. I hope that answers it. Um, here from Canada, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Bill. Hello from Indiana. How do you financially sustain your travel? Are you able to work from the boat? Uh, you know what? We originally planned not to. We sold everything and we say, okay, I can always like fix something if we run out of money and we can live on $1,200 a month. Um, and building work, which a couple of gigs will cover. Because of the COVID, right? Our also our construction main business had, has stopped. So yeah. yeah, we just shut it all down. Yeah, we were, we were at the time uh, renovating hotels doing the nasty things that people don't want to do is uh, concrete restoration. So to answer that question, since we have grown again, we put a new team together that we found also through boating. Uh, they are running the majority of the operations and uh, about four or five hours a day. We're working from the boat, guiding, reviewing contracts, upgrading drawings, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this really wasn't our plan, but you know, you learn really fast in boating. You take what comes to you. But don't plan on anything with boating. Well, sound probably shouldn't move that much. Can you guys hear us? If you can write in the chat, please write if you can hear us well and see us now. Check, check, check. Sound check. <laughs> <laughs> sound check. All right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it's fine. Maybe somebody will write in the chat. Um, well, while, while we are waiting, oh, Smoke Dolliver, Paul is our patron, is saying, Hi, it's good to see you together again. Rebooting, no sound. Yes, you were just breaking up a bit. You're good. Perfect. Yes. All right. All right. So All right. we can't move much. Yeah, we can't move much. We're not going to move much. Talking head here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, awesome. All right. So, um, so that was your question. Are you able to work from the boat? And I would like to add that with Starlink... It's definitely a totally new level of being able to work from the boat because other than when it's bad weather and you're at anchor and it's too wavy, Starlink has been outstanding. Yeah, yeah. It's it's allowed us to actually also provide the channel and the live. We're learning a few details. We're supposed to actually hook a cable to the laptop so we're not using Wi-Fi. We couldn't find the cable three minutes before this live. Uh, but Starlink does allow you to function as though you are in an office and that brings a new dimension to, to our, what I, we say off-grid living we can be in a remote island and not see a person <clears throat> a boat or anything but we can still be conducting business and we can still be conducting our youtube channel right right, right. so which is which is amazing like it, it was <laughs> not possible before and here in the islands and bahamas there's everywhere 3g so what can you upload with 3g is would be pretty hard we would have to go to the hotel and use their wi-fi yeah that would be a lot of yeah a lot of hustle. yeah i i feel for those other people on the channels that have to hike and go look for something and download like six videos and then go back again we we are pretty much on target what we're downloading is what we've done only a couple of weeks in advance um we're, we're not four months ahead like right. we'd all love to be <clears throat> yes but we're too unorganized to do that <laughs> Greg, hello, Fox. I'm so glad I caught you. Hey, Greg. Joseph, hi from Annapolis. Tom, did you sell the trawler? <clears throat> that was a long time ago. Yes, yes. Trawlers, trawler actually sold and went to another couple that is now very good friends with us, and they're doing work with us as well. So another boat experience led to another uh, huge experience. So boating has done that since I've started boating. You meet the amazing people on the water and they have a like, I guess, outlook on life. So yes, that one's gone. Uh, while we're kind of on this topic, uh, Joey is asking, what are your jobs? Joey, you haven't <clears throat> seen uh, the, the preview of every video? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you won't today. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> You go first. 
Well, I'm uh, my uh, classic education is a dentist. Uh, I finished. I worked. Uh, then I moved here in the U.S. I also worked as a photographer, professional photographer, up to my dentistry. Then I've met William. Then we started working together in construction, and since then, that's been that. That's been that. Yes. And, and William. Um, and we we still we renovate. Uh, historical hotels, old hotels that most people don't want to touch. We go through and re redo the foundations, the steel, the beams, and we make the property able to be relived again, I guess, rejuvenated. So uh, a lot of drawings, a lot of engineering. Uh, my background and my education is as an electrical electronics engineer and pneumatics, but civil engineering is pretty basic, seeing that's what I did since my father uh, I was working with him. So we went back to, uh, I guess, we went back to my roots. And um, yes, so we still operate and do the business to date, remote. Um, wherever I go, I want to open up an office. I meet people and I want to start doing more things again. I'm a business holic. Um, business holic. <laughs> so he is. I'm a business holic. You know, it's, uh, so, you know, being off grid is probably our salvation that keeps me from, you know, having four more. I thought I will never uh, get him out of Miami for real. Like, I, I still can't believe we're here, by the way. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> by the way, uh, Joy is saying, I have seen your videos. Ah, okay. <laughs> I love your videos. Right. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you live again. Thank you, Bill. Where did you, where do you plan to sail? Well, before we get into that, I have to, we have to ask one question from patrons. Uh, as patron, you get to ask questions first. So we're going to answer this one question quick, and then we're going to go back to the chat. Question from Jake. What has been one of the scariest moments out to sea? <clears throat> Microphone. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> I'm going to let you start. Okay. Um, I thought uh, before we were leaving uh, and we were sitting forever in Key Largo, I was like, ah, all this two years that William was telling me, like, oh, Yana, you should study captain's license. Like, I'm navigation. Like, navigation. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it once we leave somewhere. Because before we left, like, I don't want to be. What if we never will leave? Like, and I'm just wasting my time on this captain's license. What an idiot I am. <laughs> anyway, so we left at night from Key Largo to Bahamas to cross there. And uh, William uh, was doing something in the front uh, because our boom broke. And so he was fixing there in the front of the boat. And I, the boat was on autopilot. And our boat uh, wheel, steering wheel, if it goes back and forth to engage the autopilot. So at some point, the wheel was, what, what is it, engaged, right? It was not engaged. Or disengaged. Yeah, it was disengaged. If you lean backwards, it disengages a clutch and yes. now it no longer right. functions. Right. So I thought for like good 30 seconds that we lost steering. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, we, like what are we going to do? Because before I thought, ah, oh, no big deal. We're going to throw the life raft and we're going to be just fine. And I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm realizing we're in a freaking ocean. There is nobody here. We're going to throw this life raft and then what? Okay, maybe somebody going to find us. Maybe not. I've realized that just watching the YouTube videos, watching the TV, it has nothing to do with real experience of traveling, sailing, motoring, cruising lifestyle. So in that was my first scary experience, which answered this question. And then my scary experiences just started to unravel since now <laughs> so yours mine mine is that we were sitting at anchor looking at a water spout that was going past us and i called Jan up and i said look at this is what a water spout looks like and damned if the thing didn't turn and come right at us and we went from a calm anchorage to uh about 65 70 knots that's the wind instrument wasn't going above that our, our solar panels were flying in the air because the brackets broke and our boat started listing over to the side because the water level went down. And when it went down because of the water spout, we 
landed on the bottom. And so now we were no longer turning with the anchor being set. So our boat uh, listed way over by, well, more than what I am comfortable with. We were holding on, the doors all slid open and the Anna yelling like, what do we do? I said, I don't know. <laughs> you know, we couldn't get to the life raft. That was in the front of the boat. We couldn't get to anything. So I've learned since then, I've moved the life raft to the aft where it's accessible. I've moved the life jackets right where they're accessible. You know, normally you grab them if the weather's bad. So effectively, we went through the water spout. We came out okay. A couple of boats went past us, dragging anchor and almost hit the bridge. And so I realized that <clears throat> you can have all the programs in the world and look at all the weather windows and look at Savvy Navi and look at wind instruments and everything, but you cannot program when something happens to you, either a squall, a water spout, or some strange uh, seas. So that's the adventure of this lifestyle. And it's also a wake up call that you better be prepared even when you don't think you need to be prepared. Right. So, so uh, that was it. So let's go back to the original questions. And I see 93 people watching. Amazing. <sighs> Hello, guys. Hello, Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. If you're logged in, put a like on the video. And, and I'm going to keep saying that is that we hit. We hit uh, almost 2 million views. We hit uh, over 16,000 subscribers. And in the last three or four videos, uh, like 250, 230,000 views. So we have a lot of new patrons. We have a lot of new people commenting. We have a lot of, a lot of activity. Some nice, some not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> If you are the one who is commenting, not very nice. I you know, know who, who you are. are. <laughs> <laughs> I know who they are. So. All right. Uh, next, let's go to the chat. Um, where do you plan plan to sail, Luigi? Okay, our plan currently is to get our um, logis logistics put back together where we are because we have spent now almost two years traveling. Although we've only been out of the states for four months, we've been traveling on the boat for almost two years. So we're going to get a few things organized and then head our way down through the islands, the Caribbean, and then to the Dominican Republic uh, to avoid some possible hurricanes. That's the plan. That's the today. plan. And I'm going to tease you guys a little bit. There might be some big news coming. Oh, there might be not. <laughs> so uh, just... No, she's not having a baby. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> a baby. So, um, how do I say it? Hold on with us. Yeah, yeah. Hang, hang, in. hang, hang in there with us. Watch our videos. Hang in. We, hang in. We will, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> we will tell you. We will tell you. All righty. Um, next one. Yes. Uh, Dave. William, are you also a private pilot? Do you still fly? You know, I uh, one of my things that I absolutely wanted to do was to fly an airplane. I flew ultralights. I did skydiving. I did a lot of crazy things i know if you have far fly for about and then circling around waiting for the gulf streams to get out of my the fbo at the time was uh plano texas which is landing in the middle of a city and uh that's when i got involved in boating because i learned that i could do almost the same with instrumentation uh having control of the wheel um planning and guiding for weather but i didn't have to uh loan Because to fly privately, you're pretty much alone. You're going to pee in a bottle. Lonely. Uh, which I still do. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he But, still does because he can't, like, not being a pilot, he can't leave the uh, the helm. Uh, yeah. He's just, he just, like, how am I going to learn anything if you're not letting me to even touch the wheel? Yes, because when I leave the helm, this one pulls <laughs> the wheel back and we're, out, we're, we're without steering. We're without steering. <laughs> so. What are we going to do? Oh, my God. Uh, Joe, one time. I'm liking. Okay. Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, what's your draft? Bahamas are pretty shallow. Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. That was actually on my list of discussions. But we we have a we have only a we have a four foot keel that is filled with sunflower oil and different chambers so that it in fact assists in some of the whaling. Exactly. But you know we're not the <laughs> typical sailboat people either. So. Oh my god, that's so funny! Did you say that we hit the uh... item number seven? <laughs> well, it, it kind of like makes sense. To All say right, now. so I'm going to go into it. Yeah, go into All it. All right, so while we're here, um, one of my items on the list is we were rounding an island with uh, that was totally uninhabited. The chart said that we had six to six and a half feet of water. So um, the 
depth was showing us at around six feet, a little bit over six, a little bit over six feet. And uh, what happened is we hit a huge wave that came out of nowhere. And when it did, the boat went bow down. And when it did, naturally, the depth went from six feet to two feet. And we hit bottom. We hit rock bottom. And we hit it so hard that the whole boat made this large boom sound. I know what it sounds like and feels like because we would be hitting at bottom at anchor from time to time yep. in the past. So we hit the rocks in the bottom um, and the boat bounces back up. And then the second time we nudged, we didn't bounce hard. And away we went. Well, naturally, I ran down and checked everything. But I know that based on the structure of this boat, the design, um, it, it we've got a skeg hung rudder, fully protected prop. And what we did is we hit the steel and we gave Google a new mark on the map, as we call it. Yeah. So. You know, the draft, definitely in the Bahamas, you have coral heads and different items. But I've learned, I never ever assumed that, I've learned that if you hit a deep wave or some type of wave coming from around an island, your depth can go from eight feet to three feet instantly. Yeah. Uh, at that moment, I was very happy that we had this old steel tank. And we did not have, um, um, we, we, we would have ripped the rudder directly off of any other boat. Um, and we didn't have a choice. That, that was uh, six, six and a half feet of water for almost eight miles out. Um, yeah, we could have gone another 40 miles out of the way. But again, we didn't have to. So that's our small bottom bumping. Yep. Um, Charlie, love your store personalities and interaction. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, can you see us now? Some people saying it's lagging. Can... Oh, yes. Uh, second lag. Can you guys say if you hear and see us well? You're breaking up, breaking up. Um, how many tattoos do you have, Tom? I was amazed at the last video. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I have um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, four, four good ones and one bad one that I uh, it's under it's right here. It's a uh, old one. I'm I'm trying to get rid of it. But anyways, have one big one, two small ones on my hands, and one um, on my how say stomach belly belly. 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 Yes. Yes. Yep. Those are uh, my tattoos. And I'm gonna I'm gonna expand on that. Go um, ahead. <laughs> she, the tattoo that you see on her back, starts just below her neck, and goes down and wraps around her belly and then goes all the way down one leg to her toe. So she doesn't really have one big tattoo. Half of her body <laughs> is a tattoo. Yes, uh, the thing is that I had all I had all kinds of small tattoos that I did when I was uh, like 18 years old and I didn't like them anymore. So I went to a very good um, sort of famous tattoo artist and he only did like big works. And I said, I want to cover up. And he's like, well, what do you want to cover up? And I'm said, all of them. And he's like, well, uh, okay. He's like, we can do kind of like around them. So anyways, I trusted him and that's what he did. He's like, he slapped like this whole big tattoo on my whole body. It's not, it's not unfortunately uh, finished completely because I moved to USA and he's uh, back uh, to in my home country. Uh, and at this point, probably it's never going to be finished, but it is what it is for right now. Um, yes, yes, yep. it's with us. <laughs> so, uh, it's with us, <laughs> <laughs> it's with us forever. William, best resource for used boat parts in South Florida, Bill is asking, Sailor Man, or is there one hiding somewhere that I don't know about? Oh, you know, we have a guide because I am a absolute junkie when it comes to collecting boat parts, yeah, especially old ones. Um, so probably the second largest uh floating boat parts in the world is with us uh the first uh it's on our boat yes yes i would say chuck at sailor man is number one for parts that are for older boats sailboats and strange items you've got a liquidator company up in fort pierce that is like about 10 acres that is full of new liquidated boat parts and then there's a couple little ones scattered around mother ocean in key largo is another really cool little place to go dig around um, you know what I'll have to do is I'll have to put that into our link page below so that those looking for items, um, 
we always find and hunt that out. And that's one of the things I miss. So Sailor Man should be your best. Uh, and the good thing about Sailor Man, you can ask them if they don't have something and they can actually direct you to other places. They're, they're not like, if it's not here, it doesn't exist. So. All right. So should we, shall we go to the main topic of this live about like this whole experience stuff? And yeah, yeah, I think so. We have 103 people and 108 likes. So hey guys, 100 people watching. Amazing. So everyone send this to your friends and family friends friends <laughs> friends. Friends, and, friends and family and not maybe. your family sorry maybe just your <laughs> yes, friends. maybe not family friends <laughs> so um yeah they we put a couple topics together and in between if you throw some questions up then we'll jam it in between um it's it's been four years we've been living on board yes. between the trawler the refit uh it's been four years uh that we have been water people I mean, real water people, not like YouTube water people. Um, and we have been now two years uh, traveling up and down the coast on this boat just to get our sea legs. And then finally we escaped, I guess, four months ago. And we have been looking for every off grid anchorage we can find. And it, I'm telling you, it's amazing. Uh, when I say off grid, I mean going for three, four, five days without seeing a boat or a person. Um, and then we can go weeks if we want. And uh, so that has been our mission is to test the boat living without the shore power or without water or without assistance, uh, because that's what we plan to do with our lifestyle is be mostly off grid. Um, so we, we've learned a lot. And, and I think the biggest thing that I could give for advice to people is don't waste a lot of time making your boat pretty and don't make waste a lot of time making your boat the way you think you need it because you won't know until you get going. So just go, get, get on with it. Uh, we, we lost a lot of time, Mr. Engineer preparing for everything. And I must say we have a boat that we can flip a switch or change something and it's going to be to our advantage. But I can also say no one walks up and says, that's such a damn hot paint job. And we spent forever painting this thing. You know, people come and say, wow, it's a steel boat. I see some rust. So we spend all this damn time getting rid of rust, and it actually becomes character to the boat. So from my perspective, especially at my age, not that I'm going to fall over tomorrow, but, you know, we take time for granted. And that's what I'm trying to say to everyone is don't wait. People come up to us and say, my dream is to do what you're doing. You're living the life. And I'm like, well, then go, then go do it. Yes, Luigi, if you want to fix everything, you will never leave exactly. And that's that's a very good one. Yeah, yeah. So so our number one is that after all of these years living aboard and enjoying the memorable times are the times that we had on the boat in the water, not the memorable times of the boat being yeah. on the hard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. And uh, the scaffolding. And if you go back and look at our videos, yeah, we had a good time. We, we had a riot doing it. Because we... But that's why it also took us twice as long because we we wanted to have a good time still and still have a life while we were refitting a boat, and that's why it took us even longer. However, at least like because we like we were like okay if we're gonna drop dead tomorrow and we're in the boatyard at least we had a good time <laughs> you know yeah. right yes yes so and and your input same i just agree on that one yeah, yeah that... L listen to the wife I, there's not a week goes by that she doesn't say i told you we should have done this sooner <laughs> so yeah yeah and that probably brings a second topic that um while we were refitting for two years in the boatyard and then we were um for two years in the usa and i was like oh I can't wait for us to leave, to travel. I can't leave. I can't wait to leave, 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 leave. Like that was on my mind for two years. And I was like, this will never happen. And um, since, since like, if you've seen the episode with the pig <laughs> and me going to Miami and doing those shots, um, I, I've realized a lot in the last probably months. Um, it, it's, it's been hard on me. I, I like, I won't lie. Um, I'm looking back to those moments when I was like screaming at William that we have to leave and like, this is not what I want. I wanted to travel globally. Like, I don't want to be in the US, like yada, yada, yada. So I, I feel like I was so ungrateful 
because not that um okay it wasn't my goal to be in the u.s but u.s was a very good place to be uh from many many standpoints and when i was there i complained a lot but then i feel like um it wasn't fair you know it wasn't fair to this country because uh there is a lot of good things that when you are there you don't realize and you only realize that when you're in a country like this for example bahamas which is uh poor compared to us and you realize how many things are actually missing and that what we take for granted is not here and uh, like you look at this uh, how people leave and you realize wow like we had so much yeah it, it's and when she says that there are two traveling around the globe i traveled around the globe and worked so i was down in the where everybody was doing manual labor that's where i installed equipment that's where i did training programs so my experience of maybe 40 different countries was always where the working people were and where the village people were and that's how i grew up in what i call international travel there's another side of international travel where people go from resort to resort they grab a cruise ship they jump off they run around town and when you go to these cruise ship locations as soon as the cruise ship blows the horn everybody runs back on the cruise ship and the town closes all the doors all the windows they pull down the metal gate and the town has no one i mean not even a person because it's a fake town it's designed for that tourist so we're in places that we're looking around and investigating when the tourists leave so when we say bahamas is a poor country they're very happy people they're extremely proud very honorable honorable people i've met more honorable people here than i have in a long time uh madame sir and meaning it but when you leave that little town that's the strip where the tourists go and you go back in where there's no electricity there's no water the little children are playing in the yard just like they do in africa um, and we've talked to a lot of people that are dressing up and serving the tourists and then going back to their other life and so it's very interesting when Yana says poor locations it's because you have to look beyond the tourism right and and that's what uh, I was not accustomed to and aware of because uh, I was traveling a lot but again i was traveling this travels that william is saying that my travels were resort travels and so i didn't really see any real countries i've seen countries but only what they were showing to me as a tourist now i'm actually seeing like real world basically and to me it's to be honest it's disheartening sometimes because i i don't know like i literally feel bad because a lot of times I was sitting in the US, for instance, and saying like, oh, well, I don't think these people have that bad, you know? Like, I, I literally said those things. And now when I'm here, I'm like, no, they are. Yeah. Like, like I was incorrect. And I was incorrect because of my lack of experience. And it's, it's horrible that I can't even, um, that I was even saying this thing. So it's been like, there, there has been like a lot of lessons to me as a, like a person. So. And and I can also say that I'm, we're super fortunate to be on this boat that looks like a pirate ship. Uh, some people say it's a brigade. <laughs> um, we're not here on multi-million dollar yachts. We have yachts sometimes around us that are 50 to 100 million. We've met people, I've helped them fix the electrical power on one and made friends uh, by getting their power working. But we're looked at as sailboat people. And so we're not looked at as having really a lot of net worth we're looked at as being common people so we also get a little bit different treatment and some real honesty from the taxi drivers to the workers and i think that that's what traveling by boat does for you is it puts you more on an equal level and uh so anyway summary when you're traveling by boat be ready to see things that you're really not aware of and it's not about drinks and cocktails at the latest resort. Uh, I can see that that's, a, that's another possibility. But it's, it's about helping the community even by paying a taxi fare. Um, we can't really ride the bikes where we are because it's not that you can't ride them. It's just that people don't look for them. 
and so it's dangerous. Uh, so, you know, there's certain rules of the territory that you're at that you have to follow. So, yes, and, and that's what also was to me surprising. It's not well, like William said, it's not that it's like you can't, you just don't. And that brings us another uh, topic, which is Highland dangers. Yes. So make sure as we're talking, number one, thanks everyone for being here. And if there is a question, be sure that you log in. Well, you, you're the technical Yeah, you person. need to be subscribed to the channel and be logged in in YouTube to be able to write in the chat so we can answer your question, guys. Yes. So, um, and so we're going to segue into something else is that what we're discussing is a couple nights ago, we went across the island to a resort and we've met a couple taxi people here that are really super nice. We've taken their WhatsApp number. We can text them. They'll meet us, pick us up, et cetera. Well, we, we uh, jumped into a taxi at a very, well, the most exclusive resort here. Um, and when we got into the taxi, the guy started to leave and he couldn't shift his, his van. He couldn't steer his van. He would look down and then look at the road and not see if there was a car in front of him, he'd race up and try and catch it. And when the car was gone, then we would have him not knowing where he was. Effectively, he was so high that he was not able to even see or, or drive. And we couldn't get out of the taxi because we were in a zone where there was nothing. Like I said, it was late at night, I think 1130 at night. And so I had just said to Yana, she was talking, I said, uh, pay attention. And automatically she's like, well. He didn't say pay attention. He's like, look what's going on. Oh, okay. And this guy, when we sat in the car, I told him where we need to go, where the marine is. And he didn't acknowledge. He was like, he, he just like turned his head, which was super weird because people here are very nice and very polite. So to me, that was already weird, but I'm like, okay, I don't want to be this whiny person and just like get out of the taxi because he didn't acknowledge where should we go. But it was night, it was dark. So I'm like, okay, it's kind of weird. And the car is bad, but I mean, like we are in different countries, so um, not a big deal. So when William told me that, I immediately got into this super like scared mode. Take, take your knife out. Yeah, I'm like, take your knife out because I thought that he gonna like kill us. <laughs> Because he was literally looking, he was, he was like, when I started looking at him, and because I didn't think that William meant that he was falling asleep, I thought he was maybe like just wanted, wants to kill us or something. So he was looking different ways, like he was behaving super weird. So I'm like, why are you not getting your knife out if he's like going to stop here and kill us somewhere in the middle of the nowhere land? And he's like, he's like, it's not about the knife. I'm like, what about it? And so he finally said, like, he's falling asleep because he's so high. Yes. And uh, what he did is he had a TV screen on his seat. So he was trying to watch a movie on the bright screen. And then when he looked at the road, he was road blind. Like all of you that have a boat know what happened with instruments. So uh, we finally got to, a, normally it should have taken 10 minutes. Finally, about 35 minutes, we got near a Marriott. And so I told him, I said, sir, can you drop us off here? And he didn't say anything. And so I yelled, sir, can you drop us off? He still didn't say anything. So I took my hand and I waved it in front of his face. And here he had earbuds in with the, the movie playing. So needless to say, we got dropped off at the Marriott. Then we couldn't find another taxi. But I, I texted a couple of the people that I had retained. And one of the guys says, hey, bro, I'm out. I'll come get you. And so, uh, you know, summary is it's just as dangerous in a new land as it can be on anchor. And, yes. you know, this is a two lane road that people are going about 50 miles an hour. So one small swerve over the lane and because they all drive on the opposite side of the road, we would be in a head on collision. So uh, there wasn't much we could do other than be prepared for rolling and tumbling. Right. And that's, that's what brings another like um, a awakening call to me because being um, in the US, I, it's like, you don't realize, but it's always there. You always know you can dial 911 and better good, it's going to be there. Like it's going to be there and they're going to bring you to that hospital that is very nice and clean that you don't have to 
hope for the best getting in there. And yes, maybe it's not like ideal and it's expensive, et cetera, et cetera, but it's gonna be there for you. Here, there's only public hospital that locals themselves do not go to do not go to because they say it's 50 50 you're going to come back there or out of there or not so there's only one private hospital here and only because we are on the main island in nasa capital right now there is something like that even existing it doesn't exist on other islands so that uh, what is it deposit to that hospital is 2500 dollars to be admitted only there and then all the rest is up to them. Yes. So, and then you, exactly, you have to hope that you're going to be fine in that doctor's hospital. That, that's the name of it. So just just being in the U.S. and having the opportunity to receive medical care when you need it, it's just there. It's like it's somewhere there in your mind. And maybe you will never need it. But here, if you are in that kind of situation and you do have a collision and not be able to have medical care, that that's been to me personally maybe because i'm a doctor that's been a pretty scary thought i won't lie so um a summary of that is you should always have a medical plan and medical supplies on board your vessel not should you have to have i mean right. i'm talking about syringes sutures not your gen general medical kit uh, antibiotics you have to really be also up on cpr and have your medical background for each other, uh, and then for fellow boaters around you. Um, then you need to understand that you can't really travel around with a gun legally. That's going to be more trouble than other. But you better be traveling around with some type of, uh, I guess, self-defense, pepper spray, zapper, uh, whatever. So uh, the, the, the bottom line is, is that we're going to continue to provide information based on our experiences. And I'm sure we're not alone, but what we want to do is make sure that when you get out there and you start doing and running this lifestyle, it's not about having security and captains and having groceries delivered to you and your laundry picked up that, that we're not talking about that kind of boating. We're talking about the boating where you bring your dinghy in with your wife and you hope when you come back, the dinghy's there. So you make pretty well good friends where you're leaving it at. And, this place has been super safe, but it's been super safe because we know what to do. We know right. where to go and when not to go. And if you find a good taxi driver when you're traveling, get their WhatsApp information uh, and be nice because that time that you need them, that nice is going to come back to you, you know, tenfold. Yes. So, and something else I also was surprised about is the pricing. Like for some reason, Again, I think based on the YouTube videos that I watched for all this three years that we were preparing for our travels, I thought, huh, we're going to live frugally uh, for $800 a month uh, on a boat, on islands. We're going to be eating coconuts like and fish. Well, th there is not, no such thing here. I'm sorry to tell you guys, but this is all a BS. Like prices here are same or more expensive than in Miami because everything gets imported here. So uh, unless I don't know something, which I think I do now being here, <laughs> um, it, saying that we all live by catching a fish and a lobster, it's all a YouTube scam, basically. <laughs> um, it's just not happening. You can buy certain things cheaper from the local fishermen, of course, and stuff like that. But um, I also asked taxi driver the other day, I said, do you guys pay the same prices as we do in these grocery stores because they're outrageous? And he said, yes. He said, yes, madam, we yeah. do. <laughs> because um, everything is imported. Yeah. So that's a sad also truth about um, like island cruising kind of thing. So let's go and getting some people here. All right. Uh, do you have an EIS, Luigi is asking? I thought I saw wildlife up there. We... Um, we do not have AIS on, we have AIS. So we've also learned that part of what we're doing was we both wanted to, I guess, escape from the normal hustle and bustle. And uh, so when we do go off grid and we go somewhere, I'll typically send uh, either a family member or someone that I have in the boating community, our location uh, with a screenshot, or something from the chart plotter,
but we uh, we would only use the AIS when we're traveling or we're on the open seas, so people can see us and vice versa. Lagging um, again. Ah, <sighs> well, we try not to move. Can you guys check check? Can you write in the uh, comment section if you can hear us? If you were lagging, good yeah. now, no like. All right. Yeah, the boat's bouncing around quite a bit. And when it does that Rico is asking and somebody else also asked uh, have you seen any UFOs I haven't have you seen no <laughs> um, rocket launches yes uh, the Starlink satellites going by yes but more stars than I've ever seen in my life even even being from up north oh yeah now all kinds of things are coming in yeah, so thank good so um, no no UFOs yet <laughs> yeah that we know of. um brent i missed what island this was um we i'll bounce a little bit we landed in bimini and checked in uh then we went over to uh berry berry islands and then we went from there to two other unknown islands then we went to spanish wells then near spanish wells yana had her pig encounter of which by the way when that came up and we didn't put in the video we had to pick up anchor and we had to go some 75 miles so i could get her to an airport had we had a sailboat we would not have been able to leave because the winds were directly and strong winds were coming right at right at our bow so having that ability to motor instead of sail uh twice now has been an advantage so we left that location came to nassau uh, we landed tied the rope the lines up and she took off to the airport and so we are still here she you got back what two weeks ago three weeks ago at this point i think yeah. and tom is asking discovered any new drinks <laughs> uh no because i can't drink with this vaccination so i haven't been able to drink at all and it's kind of sad <laughs> because it's not that i drink a lot at all but now when i can't for three months i feel like i want to so but, you know, uh, for all this time, I was drinking cranberry juice and apple juice for breakfast at this one little place. So when Yana got in that very first night, we went to the same place. And I said, I'll have a cranberry and an apple with Malibu rum. So the guy looked at me. He's like, are you sure? I said, yeah, my wife's back. She wasn't really listening. So he gave me like three quarters of a glass of rum with a little bit of red cranberry on top. And Yana grabs it and she says, oh. You've got your cranberry juice, and she took a big old slurp, uh, a, a whole mouthful of rum. I'm like, what are you doing? I said, I said there is alcohol here, and he's he never drinks, never. I'm like, what? What is it? Yeah. So, so she received her first island drink with Malibu rum. Yeah. So. Right. right. Hello, uh, somebody. Uh, we just can't hear a thing. Lagging again. Good now. No lag. So it's kind of there and here and there all right scott hello from beautiful nc glad to see you are well and back on the boat thank you so much um breaking up didn't hear you answer about ais paul said we have ais it's not on unless we're traveling at night time then i turn it on uh brent yana are you fully recovered uh i i hope so <laughs> Uh, video is good. Sound is breaking now. We can hear you not lagging. Good to see you both. Um, Bradley, do you think you'll make your way over to talent? It's very beautiful. That that is uh, on the bucket list. Yeah, that that is one of our exes. Um, and yes, we uh, we're looking at sprawling our sails and our wings much further than the islands. Uh, we're here because I've always wanted to see the Bahamas living in Miami for almost 20 years. I intentionally didn't come to the Bahamas unless it was on our own boat. So we are here to explore everything possible, uh, but we will stay away from pigs. <laughs> Steve, if you're going to write it one more time, I'll say it. <laughs> no foaming at the mouth, so thumbs up. That's very mean, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For somebody scared so much, I accept no jokes about the pigs in the next three months. Yes, by the way, <laughs> I, I, I have been schooled on what I can and cannot say. So if you guys want to say it, thumbs up. Go for it. <laughs> um, uh, 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 have you spent much time in Puerto Rico, Scott? Ah, yes. Yes, I was. Uh, I installed some equipment in Puerto Rico. Um, 
some many many years ago bakari bakari to the most of the world and uh, lovely place great place i haven't been there unfortunately um david i like big engine and sailboat just so you can get up and go like the columbia river bar requires lots of hp to get through the ship graveyard yeah yeah it's we're learning that um you know we check the weather as an ex-pilot and the weather is it rules the ocean but uh we have a choice and when we want to play with the sails and that's what we're doing right now is playing with them uh we're learning um but you know what i'm i'm really getting to love the sails the masts that was not i was not a fan of that when we started this but i've learned how to use the sails now to counteract the rolls how to use the sails for stability and so the sails on this boat actually are there for um, stabilization as much as sailing. So uh, I'm, I'm getting to love the, the sails. Um, Scott is saying, I lived and worked there from 1999 to 2005. Love it, Puerto Rico and surrounding islands to the east. Okay, Steve. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Moose and squirrel. So you have to tell the reason why. You know, this I don't is... know why. Well, when we started this channel three years ago, and then we took a pause for a year. Uh, Yana's accent, many people picked up on some things and they wanted her to say moose and squirrel. And so, you know, every once in a while we get this, uh, where's moose and squirrel? I, I can't say it that way. Moose and squirrel. 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 <laughs> she's, she's trying to get over that. But no, no. It won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. Are you in hurricane danger, um, Tom? Oh, okay. We're, we're not yet. <laughs> It's but, coming. <laughs> you know, you know what? It's it's interesting is that when we left Miami, we went all the way up the coastline and we got to St. Augustine. We rode out the hurricane in St. Augustine. The whole marina was damaged. Uh, we rode it out on the boat. We were bouncing and the, and the winds and everything were flying so, so bad that we grabbed our, all of our belongings and four backpacks and we crawled on the dock and, and got ashore. But we couldn't actually cross the road because there were electrical lines and the water was so deep. So we spent seven hours watching our boat snap the lines. We went back out and we survived that one. And then we moved the boat because the marina was closed. We went to Daytona Beach. Here comes another hurricane. So we rode out another hurricane in Daytona, Daytona Beach on the boat. So we have been in enough hurricanes. Yeah, that's been uh, that's been pretty wild, to be honest. And we decided that that was the last hurricane that... That we want to plan on that, being, yeah, in, right. You know, and we, we and we are so lucky that we were like, it wasn't bad. Yeah, we it was bad, but it was not bad as on the other side of the state, obviously. Yeah, a, a lot of boats were lost uh, where we were. Uh, we snapped over maybe twenty lines. I crossed tide all the way to other slips. I think we lost like nine lines. They snapped. I mean, I'm talking three quarter inch line, not shoestrings, and we were able to retie the boat while we were bouncing around, and. Uh, we have hurricane shutters, which are three eighths inch plate aluminum that goes over all the windows. And uh, so, no, our plan is to not experience that again. So uh, we're going to continue to go south, hopefully, so we will watch the hurricanes go over the north of us. So that's why the Dominican Republic is kind of our 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 end game here for this season. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Lance, the both of you are just a delight. Vlog, <laughs> vlogs are moving well through the scenes. Thank you so much. I'm trying to improve my editing, and I'm actually, uh, I, I'm doing a boot camp on editing because I've realized I'm missing so much. Um, editing and things. thumbnails, you know, she's really, really come around on nailing the thumbnails. It, you know, clickbait. Clickbait, you know. my friend. And one hundred <laughs> and thirty. Oh my goodness! Thank people. you so much, Esbionafia. How does that happen? I don't know. Thank you so much. Well, someone did some super chat or whatever yes, that's called. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but 134 people, we hit a little bit under 1.8 million views. We have over 16,000 subscribers. And we started this saying, when we get 1,000, we'll probably stop. We kind of did this as a, I guess, a bet to each other. And because of everybody out there, that's why we're going to continue. Uh, we really want to bring this lifestyle to people because I've worked like a fool all my life. I still work like a fool, but now I'm working like a fool on the boat. So, uh, you know, that's true. <laughs> so, um, but you know what? 
it's it's because of all of you. It's because the people that came up. And I said this once before, but we were in Annapolis. We went up there and we watched all the YouTubers behind the tent. And a father and his daughter came up and he said, you know what? He said, I recognize you. He says, my daughter and I watch you all the time. And my daughter doesn't want to step on the boat, but I want her to get on the boat. So she's watching these channels. And, and we decided at that time that it was we should come back and do this. So we're, we're doing this because of the people we've met. Uh, that was our objective. Um, also, you want to cover the YouTube thing? Maybe later. All right. So uh, thank you, everybody. At 129, yes, thank you every, for everybody. Yes, like literally every every good comment, like like comment that is like coming from you guys is just so amazing. Um, it, like every time we read them <laughs> under the videos, there's like you guys are super cool. Like thank you so much for leaving all this comments we read every one of them and if we haven't responded to you like we are sorry but like we, we literally like trying to respond to every comment like like when we can like. and and i have to tell you i'm i'm the oldest of eight um i have sisters daughters so a lot of the times i make a comment to yana because we banter all the time so when i say you know we're stuck or we're not stuck uh can you get out and pull it's it's not because i'm a chauvinistic man <laughs> but it's just the way we are this what you guys are seeing in the videos is that we're even a little bit more cuckoo than that but we don't put everything in there but uh what you're seeing is us um you're, you're seeing our bantering and you're seeing our lifestyle and that's what makes magic with the two of us it's not age <laughs> it's so annoying oh my goodness those comments on those videos that went like viral for us freaking annoying like guys like i don't know how so many people can't get over the fact that we have age difference it's just it's just unbelievable to me how how many people are bothered by that i i just like because nobody obviously comes to you and says to you that face to face but on the youtube a lot of people feel like they can say probably what they think so it's just so like crazy to me that so many people have problem with that because uh, I come from a family where uh, my dad and my stepmom have 10 years old difference in between them. My stepmom is younger, 10 years. My aunt who raised me literally have has 17 years old difference. Um, and so coming from a family like that, like to me, that's not a big deal at all because my aunt were, was always telling to me it's what's the most important is love. And that's it. Like I, I didn't, I didn't think of any other than that. And although I understand that for some people it can be like weird, but I just don't understand why so many people like have literally a problem with that and like are just making jokes about it. It's just so nasty. Like, why would you do that? Like, it's not funny. Like, haha, -ha, like not funny. So summary is lucky for me that that's not a hangout or a hang up <laughs> for my wife. But that's actually one of the reasons why when she first approached the table and we first got to meet and we went out to dinner, one of my opening comments is what normally I don't last more than five minutes with someone. I, I absolutely had no thought that there would be a possibility of us two even dating or getting together because in America, this is pretty much taboo. Uh, but I think that as you travel around the world in other countries, that age difference from both men and women. I've, I've met a lot of women that have older men and I've met a lot of women that have younger men. You know, it's so, so summary is, um, you know, it is what it is. We're always going to have people on media that are going to have an opinion. Uh, right now we look at all the positive people out there and all the positive things. And I'm on positive people. You know, That's why we need positive comments. Yes. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So welcome everybody again. Yes, thank you guys. Look, 132 people watching. Thank you guys so much. Well, see, most of the people say don't pay attention to that. Thomas can't send a picture of a real one on the voice aid with fortitude. Okay. Robert doesn't bother me. David, I remember YouTube fired both of us at the same time. Tom, okay. hearts. Paul, you're happy and your negative critics are just jealous. I don't know if they're jealous, to be honest. I think some people just literally don't have that in their experience. And for them, it's just something outrageous i guess but if i find something outrageous or i don't like something i keep moving on i don't comment i don't like 
interact with those people that I don't like. I just move on because my life is too short to be wasting my time on something I don't like. I don't know why these people are like literally dwell on this. I don't know. I think it's cool. He does. <laughs> I know, don't think so. What I my saying, quack quack quack, water off the back. That's the way I look at right, it. Right, so, right, right, right. Um, oh, Pierre, yes. Pierre, well, it was a good time to ride all, uh, the hurricane with you guys in St. Augustine. Pierre this, is that amazing guy who uh, it, uh, invited us invited two total strangers to, to share his, his room in the hotel. And we were headed for Pierre, but when we saw the power lines in the water, and you know, Pierre just sent me a couple days ago a picture that he's now in Miami. Um, so many people we've met along the way. But um, you know what? Wait, it's only a coffee. But cheers to you. Thank you for being on. And yes, he he was amazing. He not only invited us, many other people helped. And those people that we met there, we've actually run into people here. So right now, our mission is to go further uh, and then tell people what we've encountered. So when they come back or they're going this direction, they can follow our footsteps. So um Oh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, for fun run, fun run. I actually remember the nickname, fun run, fun yes, run. Yes, yes, because I am from northern Wisconsin with the snow and the cold. Um, I gave up the snow shovel for chasing coconuts. and uh, But welcome, everybody. You're, Pierre, you're, you're making me blush. <laughs> That's what good deeds do. I hope your little dog is fine, Pierre. I mean, this, he, he took care of the little dog for the storm, I think, more than he was worried about himself. All nice words from people. Steve, we all love you. I'm positive that you are positive and best. Um, oh, there you go. That's yours. Which one? Uh, Up there, transitions. Carla. Carla, could you slow down your transitions from shot to shot in the video? Sometimes the transitions are a little jarring. Yeah, sometimes I'm editing at night and it's a little... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I have to post video tomorrow. I'm late. <laughs> so sometimes I get a little uh, overexcited, you know, like. <laughs> you know, the honesty is that's my wife and living with her. Her life experiences are sometimes we're going left and all of a sudden she's right somewhere. I'm like, what are you doing? She says, I think this is better over here. So uh, you know what? The videos and the editing fashion is kind of like. There is no consistency there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're always different because it depends on the editor's mood. And the editor's mood. Yeah, but I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I think there's a secret there is that lets people like go back and play it two or three times to try and catch what's going on. Um, You're like, what What? What did I just watch? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> did I really see that? Like, I don't know if you all saw the coconuts flying over her head. She even slowed that down. But, uh, you know, I, I, I love playing little pranks when we're always. going places uh, he, he always does that it, it's literally not for the video he he keep he keeps doing that it just amazes me that we are actually able to catch those moments sometimes on the camera that's pretty crazy yeah it's uh but you know i'm i'm always uh yeah i'm i'm always a small prankster and whenever i can get away with it then it's phenomenal generally i get caught but you know crawling around on an island without a soul was a little bit spooky. I had my knife actually in my hand. If I had to pull it out for any reason, uh, I'm always, I'm always prepared, prepared for a breaking engine, and I'm prepared for, you know, maybe catching a pig on the run. Yeah, you know, I've always been laughing at William that it was his over preparedness, but now being here, um, I've realized that, like, I, I don't know if how many of you guys watched maybe Game of Thrones, like. Jon Snow, you know nothing kind of thing. That's me, literally. Like, I, I feel like I know nothing. And all my experience experiences, they are there, but they are not relevant. Which, uh, yeah. which tells you, you know, after our encounter with the stoned taxi driver that couldn't walk, stand, or drive, the next day we grab a taxi and I put my, my nunchucks in my little backpack, um, aside from my other goodies. And so we arrive and I... And she opens up my backpack and she says, what the hell you've got nunchucks in here for? I said, well, yes, because I'm bringing different forms of protection. And she says, here I am again. The very next day, what did I bring? Nothing. Just me. Nothing. So I, I, I totally forgot about that already. I should have brought like a spray just in case. Because when we were in that taxi, 
and we were driving in the nowhere land, no lights, nothing. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I have nothing in my hands. That was so stupid of me. Yeah, right. But if, it's great that you were there. But what if you wouldn't be there? Like, <laughs> so, Anyway, experiences, that's what this is all about. And by the way, I don't know if Mike is here. Uh, we have one of the subscribers, Mike the Accountant. He keeps commenting, saying that William Falls are not real. Which is very offensive because they are. <laughs> have you seen it? Like, I think what we have three falls at this point uh, yeah. where, where William falls in the video. They are legit falls. But I, I have to preface is that I think one of them that was pretty epic. Um, I was running to get on a boat in a hurry and I hit a cleat. And when I did, it was on concrete. And then the other was I was jumping off a pickup truck when we're moving the motor and my foot got caught in the tailgate. But I, I've learned for all these years is that the moment that I'm not on my feet, then I tuck and roll. So just about any fall, I'm going to tuck and roll. That's just instinctive. Before so I get a lot of people saying, oh, that was not a real fall because it made it look like you knew what you were doing. No, I do fall. I, and and I do fall from time to time. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So. And most are not on the camera, thank God. <laughs> um captain 10 star how much sailing have you done lately ah lately as in the last five years or lately <laughs> as in the last <laughs> um what we've done is since since we've crossed the gulf stream which was really erratic the wind shifted and we were taking greenies over the bow a uh, water flying all over the back of the boat um i've been practicing with the mainsail and with the hank on staysail to stabilize the boat and then I can actually get about maybe a half a knot, sometimes even a knot based on the winds. And so every time we go out now, with the exception of racing back here because of the pig bite, um, we've we put the sails up. And now I've taken out a new staysail that's a Hank on. I ordered a bunch of Hank on connectors because I've learned that the, the Genoa is huge. I mean, major huge. So the Hank on and the, which is a staysail, along with the main, really stabilize the boat. It can go up and down really fast, and uh, it doesn't affect our uh, actually our direction where we're going. We've been averaging between 80 and 100 nautical miles um, when we take off and go somewhere. From island to island. Island to island. We don't really want to uh, go at nighttime because of uh, – actually, I don't want to knock the, the depth sounders off the bottom of the boat. Um, and uh, I don't want to be anywhere on the hard because no one's going to pull this boat off the hard. Right, so. right, right. Um, John's saying best protection is your intuition, gut feelings. If you don't feel right, it isn't right. That is John exactly right on spot because when we when we talked both after about this taxi driver situation, we were so not not smart because when we got into the taxi, I'm like, this taxi doesn't look right. It just smells bad. It just, the car is beat up. I mean, like, it just all, like, looked bad. But I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm here in Bahamas. I'm not going to be a whiny butt complaining about the car. I'm not going to say anything, just going to get in. Then William is saying to me. Yeah, that and and I got in, assessed everything. And the, one of the problems that I have is that having traveled all over the globe in third world countries, this is quite common. But I've only had to worry about myself. And with myself, I have uh, a lot of capabilities, uh, you know, from self-protection. But what I'm realizing traveling now in these countries with my wife and Yana is that I can't use the same tools and skills I've used in the past because I have to take care of her. And so what I should have done is I should have said, we're getting the hell out of here. But instead, my reaction went into, okay, this is quite common. If this is wrong, we can figure it out but we can't really pull over on the road with the two of us. So uh, I'm having to readjust as well on what I call gut feeling security because, you know, right, I, I do right. have someone with me. And that's one thing that's very important. If you're traveling by boat and you're circumnavigating, you're on Anchorage by boat, it's a whole different thing by yourself as opposed to having someone you love with you. Because whether it's a wife or whether it's your children or whatever it is, you now have to be responsible for the people around you, not just yourself. So there is a new dynamic that I'm learning as well that uh, 
the gut told both of us we should get out. And because neither of us wanted to say anything, we didn't. So, yeah. and, you know, we did learn in that very short instance that uh, if I want to do something, she's going to say, okay. And if she wants to do something, she's going to say, okay. And we're going to discuss it later rather right. than having a conversation. Right. Yeah. For sure. Deal. Deal. <laughs> that was that was pretty scary. Yeah. Um, Tom, I've got friends who just sailed uh, on the new Lake Wire boat, Florida to Dominican Republic. With school videos, dolphin schools everywhere. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. The main thing is secure all your stuff so it doesn't fly around when you heal. <laughs> oh, we have too much stuff to secure. Mm -hmm. Too much stuff. Boat tour will be the the answer. Uh, boat, yes. If you are watching, guys, just make sure you tune in to see our boat on Saturday because we are doing boat tour tomorrow and posting that on Saturday at 12 p.m. Sharp. <laughs> and be, be, in all fairness, when we decided to leave, there was a weather window. It was take whatever things with us we need so we can get the balance of this project finished as we're traveling. So our boat right now actually is a floating uh, parts store and Home Depot. I think we got about 75 uh pieces of teak we've got steel we've got a lot of things that as i slowly put them in the boat then they're finished and uh so that's one advantage here i found a wood shop that's making things that i don't have to make right now so i can be conducting other things so right um have you guys seen uh very thick sargasso no we haven't right they that flow no no we, we haven't uh mm -mm. no no nope. it's is your general roller reefing Blair? Yes. Yes. But we haven't gotten our new one out yet. But what happened is that uh, when I had a sailmaker come and measure for a new Genoa, because we had torn the first one up in our first sailing experience, um, he designed it actually for this steel 55 foot motor sailor. And what he did is he designed it actually much larger than the original one which was really for stabilization. And so I've had to change the blocks, the tackle. I've had to change things around to be able to accommodate that Genoa. Um, but again, I want to I want to preface, this is a 45-ton boat. It does not heal. Uh, five degrees of heel, no matter what you do with it. It's, it's the engine and everything is below the waterline. And so it is a pure motor sailor. We idle at about 800 to 900 RPM with the sails up. And then that means that we're uh, super efficient on fuel. But if I shut the engine off, we don't have a feathering plop, prop. So now we're going to slow down. So this boat was designed to idle and sail. We can sail about three knots without having the motor. So right now we pretty well cheat and motor sail. Don't see any more questions in the uh, chat. Maybe someone send a text that we're still seen and yes, heard. Yes, guys. Uh, can you hear and see us? Remember, you have to be subscribed to the channel and logged in in YouTube to be able to write in the chat. This is your chance right now to ask anything. Because I see a bunch of questions come in a hurry and then they stop for a while. Maybe because we're talking too much. How did you guys, two of you, meet? We actually answered that right in the beginning of that live. So once it's going to be posted, you can scroll back and see that. Yeah. Now they're all coming. Uh, right. I'm a six kid and I love her. Yep. <laughs> see? There, there is life. There are more people like us. Well... There's more people that have ages like us, not that there's people like us. So. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> the uh, the other thing that I, I had on our list um, is that when you look at a boat, don't be so hung up on whether it's a sailboat or whether it's a motorboat or whether it's a trawler. Whatever the boat is, you will adjust to. Um, and I'm saying that is because I'm not a sailor. I've sailed boats in the past, but I've always been a trawler guy. I've always been point the boat, go where it needs to go, because as a pilot, uh, that's where I learned. Excuse me, I just have to interrupt you because Thomas Elliott is saying we're in the hot tubs, sipping rum and enjoying the snow. Uh, How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I could deal with the hot tub sipping. I don't know that I'd like yeah. to be shoveling anymore. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. but uh, my, my point was, is that get a boat and learn the boating life. 
and then you're going to decide what you want in a boat based on you and your wife or your girlfriend or your guy friend, whatever. You're going to learn after you're actually living on the boat what you want. Um, so I've also noticed that a lot of people make a mistake and they get a boat based on what they see on YouTube or what their friends tell them. And maybe sailing's not for the person because of health or because of risk or because of physical condition. That shouldn't stop you from getting a boat. Um, and then vice versa. Maybe, I mean, I'm 66, 67? 66, 66. going to be 67. You know, until I can physically pull those lines and I can pull the sails around until I can't do that type of work. They make electric furler for that. <laughs> it's going to be fine. <laughs> You're going to be fine. Did you hear that? Electric furler. This well, is... electric winches. <laughs> winches. <laughs> winches. <laughs> they have a, a young wife to always be able to exactly. hang the sail up. What do you worry about? Yes, yes. Right. Great to see you both. Best regards from the UK. When are you visiting? UK? Where? I guess UK. Oh. When are we... When are we visiting? When are we visiting? Uh, I'd love to visit UK, but uh, I would have to get a visa. And with my home country right now, it's not that easy, unfortunately. I hardly can be in Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Bill, any tips on serving the bottom of my big steel troller? Sonic testing question mark. Serving the bottom. Yes. Of your okay. Uh, you know what? I did that. I bought even the tester. And the scenario is that with steel and metal and having worked on oil rigs, you can have a perfect location and perfect sounding and one inch over, you can have a hole. Uh, you have to put a grid pattern and get a, a kind of a feeling for what the steel is. But most of the steel boats rust from the inside out, not the outside in. That superficial rust doesn't do a whole lot of anything. So if you have a bimetal laying in the, in the, in the, in the bottom of your boat, you might have a stainless screw that's going to cause uh, advanced corrosion and it's going to rust from the inside of your boat out. So that sounding, uh, I found if you take a small ball peen hammer or even better yet a tack hammer that the old upholsterers use that have this little claw on it and you start tapping all over the boat, you're going to hear where the ribs are. You're going to hear where the steel is good and sound. You're going to hear where the steel is soft. And so I've learned that the old guys, they use a hammer. And if you use a hammer in your ear, but you put chalk lines on your boat, you're going to have a pretty good feel on what's going on. And you're going to find you can't pull all your panels out on the inside of the boat. And I was worried to death when I first bought a steel boat. I was laying in the, in the engine room doing something. I was hearing all this clicking and ticking. And those are the little fish and things eating the bottom of your boat away. But it's not the rust eating it away. So... Uh, to answer that question, broomstick, which I did a video on that on our very first video. Yeah, using don't a, watch it because it's horrible. Using a broomstick to find out where you have soft spots on fiberglass boats, using a small hammer uh, around your metal boat, and you're going to hear that ting, 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 cluck. And when you hear the cluck, 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 and then ting, 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 you know that that's an area that you should attack. So send me a message. I can give you all kinds of information about steel boats and other things. Um, Carla is saying, of all the sailing channels we watch, you guys are the most cheerful and we never know what you're going to do next. It's because we don't know what we're going to do next. That's that's for sure, which makes it fun for us too. So when are you going after you finish the Bahamas? Um, when we're done with the Bahamas, then we're going to, um, the next is going to be down to BVI. Uh, it's going to be all time dependent upon the weather and hurricanes and some possibly other news that might come or might not come i'm going to tease you guys yeah, you gotta you gotta stay watching because we might have big news or we might have no news so <laughs> uh pierre is saying that he is looking for another boat by the way uh-huh uh i'm shopping for another sailboat i'm 67 started sailing three years ago see it's never too late you know what we all have the this infatuation to look at what I call boat porn. It doesn't matter what boat you have. The next one always looks like it would be a better boat or a bigger boat. Um, and it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop for me. I still look at boats constantly. And the problem is when Yana was gone for 16 days, I really, really hit the boat porn channel. <laughs> so, um, you know what? Also hit us up. I know a lot of boats. 
I know a lot of people that are looking to shift boats from one to the next. Uh, I don't want to profess to say I'm a boat broker. He will get you in trouble. Don't text him. You know what? I, <laughs> he I, will get you I on a boat. I will fulfill your boat porn, promise. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching way too much. Uh, Carla, are you pregnant? Uh, See? I don't think so. I hope not. No. I mean, Car no. <laughs> no. Yeah, if you look at the last video, Yana got stopped at the TSA security with over 100 condoms in the backpack. <laughs> And when she said, you know, what else should we get? And I said, well, you know, pick up a couple packs. Well, Yana picked up a couple cases, which I'm pretty happy. Maybe I'm going to get to use them. So, oh my God. no, there is no pregnancy plan. He didn't want to include that in the video, by the way. I'm like, that is funny. And this is this is true. I said, ah. oh. he's like, no, we can't include that. I'm like, ah, come on. I'm going to put it there. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I made a huge mistake is that when I left Miami, I met with my top clients. And I said, you know what? I'm retired. Um, I have a YouTube channel <laughs> and we're going to travel and I'm just going to enjoy life. So I handed out these our, our Dawn Hunter cards and I've gotten some people that now understand and know we have a channel. Well, guess what? I was kind of called out of retirement. You can't moderate content just for a couple of people. <laughs> hey, those people are, you know, so all these years, these people have known me as Mr. Engineer. Um, and even a lot of my and our employees know me as Mr. Engineer. Well, don't give the channel to employees. So now my wife has her amazing thumbnails with Mr. Engineer. Maybe I'm going to get some more work. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But not the one that you want. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you got the joke? I got Yeah, yeah. I got a real joke. We saw that, but they do break. Retired OB nurse. <laughs> uh, funny. Yeah, you know what? Funny. That's our dream too. Thank you. Go to North <laughs> Sardinia, Italy. Yeah, we would love to. Uh, Europe is definitely, for sure, would be a cool the, place to visit. The the med is our, uh, you know, we have to get from here across the Atlantic, Bermuda, Azores, but we are not going through the Panama Canal, and we are not going west. We are going the other direction, uh, because we have also realized that our lifestyle. Uh, and where we want to go, uh, well, everyone goes the other way. Guess what? We're going the opposite direction. But yes, we will be into the med and through that, you know, knock on wood. Knock on wood. So. We hope so. 140 people still watching. Come on, guys. Put some thumbs up if you're logged in. Yes. And give, uh, this, give this couple a like. <laughs> <laughs> thank one, one for me and one for William. Thank you. Me, one for you. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. thank, thank you, everyone that's watching. Thank you, bunch. What's our here? Um, I thought that was funny. So it's about comments about condoms. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and you know, it's being, a family friendly channel. Yeah, be, being an engineer, I understand that too much metal in your bags, and I design metal detection systems around the globe. And you know, I thought, well, here's what happened I said, get me a new iPhone because mine's breaking and it's not working with the crap. And then she got the other things, including all the condoms. Well, you know what has she done? She puts the condoms in her backpack and she puts the iPhone in the luggage. Because my sister came to visit for her spring break while I was doing the shots. So I could have not been transferring all those hundred condoms in front of her to the bags. <laughs> That's the reason. So, you know, the metal detector goes crazy. Uh, she's leaving, coming to the Bahamas the way she looks with all of the parts and the boat parts and the bags. It was pretty good because they in, they actually checked out all of the condoms, put all the focus there, and they didn't care about her baggage, which that had a bunch of boat parts. So, you know what? If you ever want to, like, defer the all of the attention, put 100 condoms in your wife's bag <laughs> without her knowing it, and then you're just going to walk right on through. <laughs> Um, Magnum man. Oh, that's uh, a good one. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna call him from from now on, Magnum. Man. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, how do you spell your name, Yana? Well, this is a correct spelling. However, in the U.S., they misspelled my passport, and it's Y. It's I A N A. So uh, in the U.S., I'm spelling it I A N A, but you're you're doing it correctly. Yes. Um. So should what shall we do? Sh shall we um, talk well, about the YouTube monetization? Yes, thing? yes, yes. Uh, because that's one of your big 
Uh, my one of my biggest achievements in life, I feel like you guys know probably that our channel was demonetized, and we talked about that forever, right? And um, so if you if YouTube it's connected to AdSense, so AdSense is kind of like a a part of YouTube that allows you monetization. So if they block you, you're done forever. You cannot appeal. There is you're done. So they did that to us. We never knew why. We had ideas, but it was just our guesses, like, what well, we don't know. No, nothing was possible. For two years, I was trying to contact them and figure this out. I tried everything possible from white hat to black hat and everything. No, nothing. So, but I just, we restarted the channel. Not possible. And they demonetize you. It's to, it's connected to a person. So it's like your person's name is demonetized till you die, basically. And this channel was connected to my name. So you, you can't like do anything about it. And so what I, I still kept researching and I just couldn't get over it. And I looked at those big channels and the big channels were like, well, I've sent a couple of emails and they put us back on. And I'm like, we're not big channels. We don't have those emails. We don't have contacts. Like, literally pissed me off so bad and i just kept researching so finally one of those big youtubers is saying hey uh, by the way there is a twitter account of uh, youtube uh you can contact support on youtube and i'm like okay i don't have twitter but i registered there and i'm like hey team youtube uh been demonetized blah 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 gave them the whole story not even hoping for an answer they answer they're like We'll check it out. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. A response <laughs> after two years of me trying to figure this out. Anyways, they responded. They just turned it on. Yeah. So they just turned on our monetization. <laughs> and they're like, what? I I was like, I cannot believe it. She was jumping around the boat saying. I, it's not that it brings any money. It doesn't at all. But just the fact that I actually achieved something that was unachievable, literally. I felt like it was absolutely amazing. So, so you guys know now we are monetized. Freezing. Can you imagine that? Yeah, we. So I had said, just give up. We'll sew canvas. We'll do something for a living because originally we had planned on YouTube to supplement our travels and our income, right? Uh, based on advertising and everything else. Um, and so, you know what? This is the one time where her persistence uh, definitely paid off. Typically, Yana has been a person that jumps from, you know, different things very fast. Um, and so she succeeded at this. Yeah, I was very surprised because I like two years, like literally two years. I was like, there is no way this is happening. Like, this is not happening. Yeah. And I, I don't ever give up. I'm I'm stubborn as shit. I mean, if I if someone tells me I can't build something, yeah. or I can't fix something. Yeah. And he looked it up and he's like, this is not possible. I agree. Like. This is done. So, yes, we are monetized, <laughs> which means we make some money off of those ads. Um, it also means that our statistics and some of the other things that we're now involved in, uh, we have people contacting us to test some products, to test some software, to do some things. So uh, uh, I, I'm sure it's also because we're persistent and, you know, we're still yeah. here. Yeah. So, yeah. As a, a call. Sue them lot now for lost income. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, your favorite ports, House of Tone. The who? Favorite ports, ports, oh, ports port. of call. Ports of where we go. Yes. Um, you know we we spent a lot of time up the East Coast, and there's a lot of unique places in the United States that you can boat and never, ever, ever have to leave. I mean, there are marinas, there are dismal swamp. We are so fortunate along the coastline from the Keys all the way to Canada uh, without having to cross an ocean. Um, it's just that I've been doing that for a long time. So right now, I think my favorite uh, has been the non-ports, the places that are not typical, where we find by active captain, we look where there's not a lot of comment, and I hope that we get there. I don't see a bunch of masts. We drop the anchor and we stand, we spend a week and we see no one and nothing. 
And we also get then boat projects done because if you get in a decent port of call, guess what you're doing? You're running around having conch salad. We call it snaggling. And and you're you're <laughs> playing in the casino hoping for another gallon of gas. Um, so I, I don't really have a, a favorite yet. I, I'm sure that over the next yeah, year, me neither. I'm gonna find you know yeah. everyone is unique. Everyone has a little bit of cool. Like in one place, we got conch and lobster and stone crab for forty-five dollars delivered to our boat. I mean, like three hundred dollars worth of stone crab. And then you get used to that, and you go to the next place, and you don't get stone crab, but you get something else. So every every port has a really unique, you know, opportunity to it. Captain Ten Star, you had mentioned Atlantic Highlands. I go to Sandy Hook sometimes. Ah, okay. It's that's I, I bought the trawler actually in New Jersey by Sandy Hook in Atlantic Highlands. It, it had gone through Hurricane Sandy, and I bought it off of a Duck Island reserve where they had to drag it off. So I bought it as a uh, salvage, but it wasn't salvage. Nothing was wrong with it uh, to my liking. Should you, uh, let's see if we can see who did that top track chat uh -huh. so we can do a shout out. Oh, to we them. did. Yeah, but ask, let's ask if they have a question for Maybe us. they already left. That's why I wasn't sure if we could find them. Well, here you go. Is, uh, I can't read that. Esbonafia. Esbonafla. Esbonafla. <laughs> is Esponafla still here with us? Because they <laughs> they did something that I didn't know you could do. They sent some kind of special, uh, a big donation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so guys, if you're here, like maybe you have a question. Or something. Somehow a red chip popped up. I thought I was in Vegas. That was. It was like an hour ago. They probably already like went to bed. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> so you know, we we don't want to keep rambling and rambling. Right. Uh, right. So if they're. Uh, Oh, it's a super chat. Yes. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> because we've been demonetized for two years. We don't even know what that is. We don't know. <laughs> we, <laughs> like, uh, I thought a super chat was a very long conversation. I don't know. Villagers. Village, <laughs> villagers. Villagers. Would you, um, so so um, any questions you have, because you can always go back and watch this. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, while you guys writing your last questions, by the way, Andy, happy Easter from a rainy Ballarat, Australia. Good Friday morning. Good luck with your work. Thank you so much, Andy. Yes, and I wanted to say uh, tomorrow is Good Friday. In some places, it's Good Friday already. But uh, definitely happy Easter. We are going to be leaving where we are uh, and going out on the hook somewhere. That's our mission. Um, so now we get to stock up Captain, no clue. Yes, yes. Thankings to you. Oh, you know, I saw comments... Uh, I did ask for the next time Yana goes ashore to bring back handcuffs. I don't need any ropes because we already have them on board. I use the lines. But there was a comment that said handcuffs and ropes to go along with the 100 condoms. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so funny. What are you going to chain me to? To the palm? To me. Uh. <laughs> so we're going to do patron shout outs while I'm reading them very quickly. You guys... Write the last comments, and then once I'm finished, we're going to answer those. All, all right? right. Now we're getting a ton of questions. Go well, ahead. right, because I said that. Okay. Shout out. Mario, Roy, David, Andrew, Clevin. Is it for Kevin? <laughs> Clevin, Joey, Phil, Tim, Albert, Aaron, Dustin, Brendan, Freddie, Seaman, Bruno, Dustin, John, Ahmed, Max, Yuri, Mark, Mohammed. Thundercat, Giuseppe, Tyler, Joan, Anderson, Robert, Jonas, Ruben, Kate, C. Post, Stephen, AMTH Laxer, Jim, Casey, Tanya, William, Michael, CW Boy, Cowboy, <laughs> Jerry, Willie Boy, Ricky, Mike, George, Alan, Robert Haskell, Scott, Freedom Built Inc., Nick, John, John, James, Banyan, Jerry, Stewart, Jesse, Luf, Joseph, Remy, WTH, Jake, Eline, Kio, Colo, ML, Mike, Andrew, Gary, Michael, Michael, Hank, Will, Hans, One, Dalkinrod, J, SK, Charles, Joan, and Brian. Those are all the new patrons we got just from those two viral videos yes yes um thank you guys so much for joining and thank some... you to all the current and previous patrons yes special thank you to you guys
All right. Now, now the question. Now, come. okay. Question. We are doing a motor rebuild for a Russian couple who have their first sailboat in Atlantic Highlands. We were there Monday. Blair, oh. I uh, a piece of advice. They not mean, or they are not, or they are not cold. really cold. <laughs> they are just very. Um, how you say it? How you say it? They are. I would say that they're accustomed to their traditions and customs, which is the opposite of Americans. You know, we're like, "Hi, how are you?" And in their country, they're like, "Hi, how are you?" Yes. <laughs> so, so a lot of times, uh, Russians can be um, perceived Miss. by very rude people by Americans, but in in most of the cases, this is not the case. So I'm just saying to you, it might take them some time to get accustomed, but it can be some unnice people yeah. as well. I don't know. So. Just just saying. Are you going to take any crew? Are you going to take any crew? Um, right now, not on our plan. Number one is our boat is so full of parts that we wouldn't have room for anyone to sleep. Uh, Safely. Our, our whole front cabin is both a jewelry store uh, because Yana started an online floating jewelry. Floating. Floating jewelry. Floating jewelry. Yeah, store. floating jewelry store. That's her. That's her store and her work area, um, and then the rest is chuck full of parts. So, uh, right now, no crew in mind. Um, but uh, I see a lot of other people who go ahead and they lease a boat for a week or charter a boat for a week. There are some things in our future plans we may look at doing. Right, um, right, right. If the channel grows, that, then we can definitely think about something like that. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think. Even better than having a charter, it would be to have a how do you fix your boat properly <laughs> on a boat as a as a school. So yeah, like a, like a work camp. Yeah, a work, <laughs> a, a work camp on the water. How's that? You know. Um, Steve, what's your, what's your average monthly cost of sailing? Please share. Uh, you know, we thank you everybody else out there that we've watched tons of videos on costs and budgets, and there's a couple also in 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 the Dominican Republic. Um, Emily and Clark. Emily and Clark that I've yes. watched. They every month they would show their expenses, and I'm like, oh, is that possible? You know, um, our our actually we've been very fortunate because we carry a thousand gallons of water, we carry 800 gallons of fuel, so we haven't had to put water, we haven't had to put fuel, um, so we're we're living uh, quite economically, except for the cost of food is is crazy expensive. Yeah, that I've uh, mentioned already. Like food on the islands is expensive. It's very expensive. So when you go, you have to be quite frugal uh, and meet someone and get their fish. I've traded trash bags for fish so they could put fish in there. So, you know, live off of the things around you that are not high cost. Conch salads you can get for amazing um, yeah, so but it's not even always possible. Like it's not like those, for example, those local fishermen sometimes are available on certain islands and sometimes they're just not there. Like there is nobody to ask for that fresh fish and it's not like you can catch it in any location. So it's not always possible, unfortunately, to live frugally like they show on YouTube. Yes. So uh, I would say that in our research and putting, building our own budget, you can very easily live for $1,500 a month. Um, without adding Starlink, for instance, and uh, uh, and don't go ashore. Yes, right, and you can't count Marina on no, that. No, no, no. You, th this is the biggest danger: is the moment you tie your lines up into a marina. It's not really the marina cost. It's just that you see all these things that you're not used to getting, and guess what you do? You get them, and then that means even extra food and vegetables and everything. And now you are five days later saying, "I don't want to eat this food because I want to go somewhere and eat." Because for the last month, I couldn't get off the boat except for the dinghy. So, you know, it's it's a very easy budget. But also you have to calculate in boat maintenance uh, as another little sock yeah. in the corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, people pay more for rent in beautiful places than we pay in six months to be at anchor. So it's it's rewarding to be at anchor. We will meet up when you're in Fort Lauderdale. Again, you have my email. Fun run, fun run. Uh, okay. Case, truly enjoy your videos. Safe travels and happy Easter. Motor Yacht Ohana. Thank you so much. Kate, Bill, thanks for the time and the content. All the best. If you need something in the Bahamas, I might know a guy. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Captain Tensta, you two are very nice. I wish you all the best. I'll be watching and your editing is pretty good too. Thank you. <laughs> uh, David, I had quite a new, a few Russian friends in Alaska. And how I trade with the Russians all over their country. Yeah. Not now I trade. Yeah. Uh, Blair, water maker. Yes. Um, 
you know, I saw a couple of comments on the water and we do not run with a thousand gallons full. The water is for uh, ballasting because it's an exact midship. And uh, when the boat was built in 1985, the water tank is a double hull part of the boat. And so we use that for ballasting. We typically have 200, 250 gallons maximum that lasts us forever. But uh, we did purchase a water maker because I have learned as well, I don't really want to be carrying around all that weight. The other thing that we didn't realize is that if you happen to have a leak somewhere and the pump keeps running, you're going to put a thousand gallons of water in your bilge. Now the bilge and the layout is designed such that it can hold a thousand gallons and not get the engine or, or batteries damaged. But uh, that was a very strong awakening. One day we came and the water was spraying all over the yeah, galley yeah. and the pump kept running because we have 50 pounds per square inch, 50 PSI of water pressure. So you can shower and wash the boat off. Um, and uh, so, yeah, the water maker that we purchased is a 24 volt Schechner. Uh, it is able to make 65 gallons a day or something like that. Um, that'll be the next, it's, it's already installed. It isn't connected yet because fortunately we're, you know, running around without having to have water. Yeah, 1,000 gallons of water, that's like 8,000 LBS. Yeah, you know, like my friend said one day, I took a bunch of things off the boat. He said, your water line didn't change. I said, yeah, at 45 ton, yeah, it's... I keep telling to William that we should, like, put more water in the in the boat because, like, we have a dishwasher, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and he's always like, no, no, we can't put more water, like... What if it's gonna burst? <laughs> so. Why do you think you can be reading comments? I'm reading comments and you answering them. <laughs> He's like, yeah. what are they writing? You know, ever since she went and got the vaccinations and she was gone for like 15 days, now I have this very energetic, happy to be on the boat. Very happy. Amazing to be next to me. I, I think every seven, maybe every three years, there should be some distance. No. <laughs> is Yana going for her 50-ton captain's license? Well, Yana is going for some kind of captain's license, at least online, because this is just not safe for me not having any knowledge. And that is very clear right now. And that is like a must. So Yeah, we, we were fortunate. And this is another thing, as I mentioned earlier. We were fortunate that she had to get back somewhere where there was an airport. And we had the ability to turn the engine on and head directly into the wind, not worry about the weather, even though it was pretty nasty, and, and get here so she could be on an airplane in a matter of hours and not weeks. Because had we waited weeks, we wouldn't have a choice. So uh, in this case, it was her. It could be me the next time, which means she would have to do something. So her captain's license is not going to be the paper license. Her captain's license is going to be learning how to right. move this boat. And I found that there's very large sailboats from the 30s that come here, no bow thruster, no capacity to even get into the marina, and they drop a dinghy out, and the dinghy pushes their bow like a thruster, and then pushes their thern, stern. So I've learned that Yana could get anywhere near a marina and then call the marina, and ask for assistance, and they can get the boat against the gas dock. So I was always playing with this thought that we had to be able to both dock the boat. There's not a need. Uh, you know, even in these remote islands, there's a way to get a boat somewhere if, if you're in need. So everyone says the dishwasher use less water than hand washing. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. <laughs> no. Absolutely, we agree with that. It, it actually it actually does. Yeah, uh, William didn't want to... I did not want to put a dishwasher yeah. because of the gray water holding tank and because of the water consumption uh, and a bunch of other things. I used to have to fix those things in college, and I was always cleaning the food out of the bottom because most women don't rinse the plate first. They're like, why should I do that? I've got a dishwasher. Chuck all the food in there, and I'm pulling chicken bones out of the bottom. Well, to answer your question, the dishwasher uses much less water. Uh, it also does not have to heat... Uh, after the cycles, so you can shut the heating cycle off. So it uses very little power. But most importantly, you can stack it full and then cycle your dishes. Because when you're on a boat, you only have a small sink and you're constantly washing dishes to keep them clean. So the water is always running and naturally is running to get it hot. 
and then it's running to rinse. So yes, uh, what I've learned uh, against what my thoughts were, a dishwasher does conserve uh, even energy and water. Well, but some people have uh, salt water though. Well, and, and another thing is I found an 18 inch. It's a very tiny one that will fit under most boat countertops. And it's one that you can take the drain and just plumb it right into your sink. Because on a sailboat, you can't really send anything overboard. So, uh, you know, um, you've got to have fresh water. But nowadays, you have a water maker. You make the water. You let the dishwasher clean the dishes. And guess what? You have a very happy wife. <laughs> yes. I actually, I was, because being an anchor, you literally, like, cook three times a day, uh, which is different from where we were in Miami because we could go eat something or take, how say, take out. Uh, here, like, no, it's just not possible. Um, so yeah, it's it's been yeah, it's you know been what? Very helpful. If it, it's been very worthwhile, and plus another thing, it's so refreshing to get up in the morning and open that little door, and here's nice sparkling clean cups. Uh, all everything's all clean and washed, so it can actually wash while you're sleeping. I like comparing to to those times where there was no dishwasher. No, what I'm saying is that. <laughs> You, and those cups were not as spotless when I was washing them. Is yeah, this what you're implying? What here? I'm saying is with the dishwasher running, the magnums get to be used. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Magnum man has spoken. All right. I, I all see right. a question below there. Okay. And do you have to have the jab to enter any of the islands or tests? Not as we are aware of. Not anymore. That's all gone. Um, that's no longer active. The... Uh, the other thing that really surprised me is, and I, I didn't know anything about this, and I'm going to cover it quickly. When you come to an island, no one else, no one on board is able to get off the vessel. You have to raise the yellow flag, and you tie up to the dock, and then you have to get to Immigrations and Customs, and you fill these forms out. As a captain. As a captain. Actually, in this case, it's called the master. So the master goes with the passports and says, here's who I have on my vessel. They look at the passports. They stamp them. Boom, boom, boom. Um, you're supposed to go to immigrate, go to customs first, and claim that you have guns or not guns, etc. Uh, they give you one stamp, and then you go to immigration. Uh, you come back with those papers as a master, and now the people that are on your vessel are free to go wherever they want to go. No one comes to your vessel. No one comes and checks your vessel. No one puts your arms against the wall and frisks you. And the secret of that is that go to the islands that have the cruise ships because the cruise ships bring 15,000 people in and those all have to be processed. And here you have 15,000 people all paying that $50 bill. And here you are by yourself in the office at the end of the day after the cruise ships have left. And all they want to do is just take the stamp out, stamp it and say, have a good time. Everywhere we've gone, that has been the scenario to date. So my biggest concern was always, you know, how do we check in? Uh, blue passport, red passport, you know, all of these details. And no one cares. Um, I don't want to say that it's it's very laxed, but we've never had. Yeah, but we only checked in in one country. We'll see how it goes later on, because I know for a fact that in Europe with my passport right now, it's very complicated. I don't know if that will be different on a boat or not. Well, what I've done is I've asked uh, about 10 captains. And these are different captains that I've been asking the question of, well, Ms. Yana was gone. And so I've gotten the same scenario that there are some more friendly places, but the key I just gave you is go where the cruise ships go. Uh, that's their, their life is servicing 20,000, 10,000 people at a time every four days. So the, the odds are, you could be the one guy that gets boarded or tested or looked at, but that's not the island terms as far as Bahamas. Um, but one thing, very important, make sure when you leave that you get your checkout piece of paper. Because if you don't have a leaving paper from that location, you may not get into another island because that paper is very important that you left somewhere else that checked you in. So your first check-in point is your most questionable and after that you just kind of roll from place to place but um anyway that's checking into an island yeah we're gonna call it a day yes right yes yes uh and go ahead 
Uh, we're here because of you guys. Yes. And we're here because of the patrons. And we're here because of the channel activity. So uh, I used to answer every comment. And wow, at 250,000 people, I can't answer every comment. So I'm trying. Yeah, we're but both, we're trying to answer as, almost as many all of as them. possible. Right, right. But if you uh, you send us uh, the patrons, we answer every single thing. You send us a question about anything from a boat to technical to anything that comes uh, to us on a different yeah, we just, format. Yeah, we just can answer it more detailed. We can answer detailed. Right. And so if you're looking for a boat or if you're looking for some solutions as you're traveling. Um, but again, thank you, everyone. This has been yes, phenomenal. Yes, we love you guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate literally every comment. And there's 125 people still watching. So put that like there because it helps the channel. <laughs> Or right. I'm gonna spank you. <laughs> <laughs> or right. Magnum Man gonna come uh, for you. <laughs> happy Easter to everyone. Yes, happy Easter, guys. Happy holidays and love you all. Thank you so much for your support and uh keeping us going. Yes, and check in on Saturday to see our our disaster boat boat tour because we're not gonna have time to clean anything. We're gonna record it tomorrow and on Saturday, 12 p.m. We're gonna post it. <laughs> See you guys. Ciao. Bye-bye.